This exhibition was originally uh, to be part of the Year of Craft, uh, which is uh, a year put aside for by the Crafts Council of Ireland to promote craft in general and to organise events, exhibitions, uh, seminars and so on to promote a wide variety of different crafts, particularly crafts that were suffering from a sort of lack of attention from the public. And uh, Pianerie is one of those crafts in a way. And so when we discussed what we might do, we decided to, on an exhibition. But uh, it's not just an exhibition in a way, it is, uh, we constructed it as a sort of educational opportunity because what we wanted to do was to attach educational events and projects to the exhibition. I started calligraphy as a teenager and got so interested in it that I decided there and then that that was what I was going to do and I've been doing it now for about a quarter of a century. This is a famous poem by W.B. Yeats. This is a very pure kind of calligraphy. There's nothing in it except black marks on white paper. And it is intended to embody something of the meaning of the poem. A poem about violence, which was written during the Irish Civil War, as far as I remember, but applies as much to our situation today as to the situation Yeats found himself in in 1919. This part is drawn on paper first, and then it's traced over to a degree with a quill. And then the second part is much more directly done. It's, uh, I have a general idea of the shape of it and I just p set pen to paper and start. You have to practice in advance a bit like playing a piece of music. When we decided to have an exhibition, I was going to Boston to take part in a week-long series of workshops over there uh, where mostly American calligraphers gather, but they bring teachers from all over the world. They bring the top calligraphers, really, from all over the world to teach in this uh, workshop. We had already thought of the exhibition and decided to put it on, so I used that opportunity to meet all the teachers, to meet uh, the professional calligraphers from a wide variety of countries, so, uh, and ask them all for work, and without exception, they, they sent pieces. Well, this piece is entitled Water Lilies. I first got the inspiration for the actual painting from a visit in Padua, where we went into these beautiful gardens and we came across this very unusual water lily. As an artist, I basically like to introduce drawings or paintings into my calligraphy pieces. And in this case, I have written a short sanquan, which is a five-lined verse. So in this case, I've taken water lilies. The second two words, aromatic and fragrant, describe the water lilies. Then, floating, rising, resting, lulling, and then the sentences, silver lily pads sparkle, and Iades, which are water nymphs, and the water lily is actually the water nymph. There were some difficulties. Uh, for example, the people that we invited from Japan were preparing their work when the tsunami hit and, and the earthquake hit and so on and they had great difficulty getting their work in time. Eventually it came and very beautiful it was too so we were very pleased to, to get that work from them. Otherwise we had uh, work from Pianerie, uh, the, the Association of Irish Calligraphers. They produced, we all produced our own work and there are, there are student work so in a sense there are three levels of work in the exhibition. So, uh, 
I've always loved beautiful writing, which is what calligraphy is, since my childhood. And as I grew older, I, I retained my love of it. But it kind of lay dormant, actually, until I was in my late 50s, when I suddenly said, I'd love to get lessons and learn properly how to do calligraphy. It's based on a passage from the Book of Proverbs in the Bible, and this passage envisages God creating the world through wisdom. On the right-hand side, in the, in the white writing, is a kind of male imagery of God, as God the creator and architect. And then on the other side, in the, in the blue writing, is a much more female image of God, and the two are kind of interlocking, interlacing, and surrounding the world, the sense of God's creativity keeping the world in being. The exhibition opened last Tuesday morning. On Tuesday night, actually, we had a visit from the representatives of the World Crafts Council who were meeting for a conference in Dublin Castle. And they came down and uh, were very impressed, actually, with the exhibition and enjoyed it greatly. The exhibition is organised by uh, Carnery, which is the, Org the Association of Irish Calligraphers, and uh, sponsored by the Crafts Council as part of the Year of Craft in Ireland and we timed it so that you'd be able to visit it. <coughs> We've had it in the autumn but we thought this would be ideal to have it at a, at a time like this. Flowery are a very important group within the Crafts Council of Ireland. They really I suppose symbolise what's fantastic about our membership organisations in that they've a small group who've come together and put on this absolutely wonderful display of craftsmanship and of excellence. If you look around at the work, the work really showcases a lot of our heritage and our traditions within Ireland. And we're delighted that this being the year of craft, that they've really put on an exhibition of really high quality. And I think the curation of this this evening showcases this. And I'm thrilled to be here as a representative from the Crafts Council of Ireland. Yes. to the Shannon went into the Shannon office to register and it, just like other forms you you see the, the where your printed name is and then you you sign for the signature and I've signed the signature and I said will I put my name um, in the other you will not we have a calligrapher who comes in to do that in Leinster House so if you're ever in there I'm not sure if it's ever on show but it's interesting to look back that for years they made sure they didn't just put anybody whose name went in there, but to, to make sure that they did it themselves. I have a, a, a Japanese friend who writes to me reasonably regularly. He's an older man and is in the business that I was in for many years. He came over to see me some, some time back. He actually asked me, when did you start in business and how many shops have you got? I said, I, I started in business in 1960 and I think we now got 19 shops at the time. He said, ah, in 1960, I too had one shop. So we both had one shop in 1960. And I said, and tell me, how many shops have you got now? I've been very proud with our 19 super prints. And he checked with the interpreter and it worked out that he'd 14,700. <laughs> I said to him, ito -san, tell me, what was it that made you so different from all of those other retailers who back in 1960 also had one shop. And he said, let me think over the answer. And as we got out of the car in Hoth about half an hour later, he said, you asked me a question half an hour ago, and if I may give you a quote. And he didn't claim it was his own quote, it was one that he, he used, he liked, and I know it's been used by other people as well. Whether you believe you can, or whether you believe you can't, you're right. And I think that's a little bit of what we need in Ireland. But I think it's a little bit of what you've achieved here today. I think what you're saying to those of us who've had our eyes opened here, 
look what we can do, look what we're able to do. And I think you're also saying, look what we will do. So it gives me great pleasure to congratulate you on this event tonight, to congratulate you on having it in such a lovely venue, and even more so, congratulate you on, and everybody involved in Piara for what you are not only achieving tonight, but for what you're going to achieve in the future. Well done. Thank you.